Well, hello, Mahalo here with Dante. It's September 2024. We've known each other four or five years. Or, yeah. And so, yeah, we thought we'd do a little update. And this time, let's focus on this guy and find out a little bit more about Dante. Is there anything you want to tell the wonderful people watching this about yourself? Well, I have to focus a lot, and the channeling came from a lot of focus, and my path began with yoga and with plant medicine, shamanism, and then the sort of more metaphysical energy work, Reiki, and and then kind of more out-of-the-box things that I did with different shaman, or depends how you call them, I guess, and... So, yeah, it's a lot of daily practice that evolved into this. And so how long ago was this and where was it? Um, 12 years ago? Uh -huh. uh, maybe, so, uh, yeah, 13 was the beginnings of it. And then uh -huh. really kind of emerged 12 years ago. And I was living in Philadelphia at the time, uh, really focusing more on the spiritual path and that sent me to Mexico, which led to Guatemala. I left on a one-way ticket, and I was really drawn to the... Uh, there was a gathering of people in Palenque. Palenque is where the some of the records that led to a lot of the uh, ideas around the Mayan calendar in 2012, shifting cycles being something really significant. And I encountered a lot of books as I kind of entered more metaphysical circles. There's always these libraries on in the healing rooms so it's kind of and everything was like 2012 2012 and then it was in 11. it was in 2012 that i started it started you know i i heard about 2012 before be, people were like oh my god the world's gonna end i'd like jokingly somewhere i wanted to be there yeah 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 and i wanted to go all the way to south america but in the end i just ended up in guatemala and i met teachers there and one of them told me you stay here you have work to do and eventually I lived with him um, and other students. He housed a bunch of students and we were a learning community. So what, I mean, did you kind of separate from your family or what did your family, did they support this or they thought you were going off on your own? Oh, it worried them, but they, and, you know, my mom wasn't as so happy about it. Um, but. They they came to accept it more or less um, in their own way, and they still have their own ideas and they still have their own reservations. But um, I guess it could be worse. I don't know. This <laughs> so it doesn't really matter at this point, does it? Well, yeah. I, I was thinking at this point. So that's that's how it started. What yeah. are the big biggest details of change from when it started to now? What what as you look back to yourself there? What in myself, or yeah. In... What what do you feel is different, or what advice would you give to yourself back then? I would say, stay on the path, uh, but take things a little bit less seriously. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of rigidity in my way of doing things, and insistent. Well, no, I don't <laughs> rigidity. I will call it rigidity, and, and that's a kind of insistence, but it's very specific and like, like yeah, I had these. Out, out there shaman teachers, which was one side of the spectrum, and they were kind of crazy wisdom. And then I had kundalini yoga and other things that were a lot more, like, influenced by a religious perspective, and they're very strict, like, wake up at 4.30 a.m. and do two and a half hours of yoga, and on top of that, make sure you do all of these things every day, and then fast over everything you eat to these extreme extents, and absolutely don't do this and that and there was a lot of this rigidity in my early years that um actually made me more sick because every time i ate something if it wasn't the most perfect thing which ended up being a lot of the things i ate because i was traveling so much and you often don't have a choice yeah. there was this fear holding me back and i had a lot of fear in the early years and i th i'm still working through fear on some levels it's kind of a never-ending journey right and like when you know when we, when we're um totally beyond all levels of fear we probably won't be in this dimension at all anymore so i think that's what a lot of people have to work or oh, we could be in this dimension as well 
<laughs> well, I mean, like, there's many different levels of the Earth plane, right? And we'll be at a higher frequency of the Earth plane, I think. Yeah. So well, where are you now? What are the biggest changes from that start to today in you? Oh, I feel a lot healthier. I'm a lot happier. I'm a lot uh, more energetic. Um, and then it was like there was sort of the path before me, and now there are many different crossroads. And in a way, it just kind of flows because the heart's compass just makes it like, this is the most obvious path. This is the most obvious path. So um, in a way, there's more choices. And in the end, the heart just knows which is the right path. I have a lot more adaptability in relationships, a lot less reactive, a lot wiser. But, you know, from then and now, there's been thousands of lessons and challenges and uh, miscommunications that have really strengthened my mind and tons of things that I've read and studied and strengthened my mind and opened my heart, softened my heart. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. So what's your glimpse into the future ahead? What do you see for you in the coming years? Mm. Oh, wow. I have so many things that I want to do. And today, after my yoga practice and the relaxation at the end, I was getting this message like, get all of these, like, it's great that you have these ideas, but don't insist on them. Don't fixate on them. And just do what feels natural in the moment. Like, I have um, multiple books that I've written that I want to uh, edit one of them to get it out soon. And the others are for later. Um, and I want to get more channel work out there and direct it to people, get it to bigger audiences. Um, I feel so much creative energy. Like, there, I have so many ideas of what I want to create, but then I have tons of things that I also want to study and, like, integrate more, like the um, astrology, for example, and Ayurveda, like natural forms of healing, um, working with plant medicines in more specific ways very much interests me. Um, and I'm going to India in the winter, and we'll do sort of like a detox and maybe more focused training with um, massage and maybe more advanced yoga classes. I'm already at a pretty good point, but a teacher always helps me to push a little bit further or see some blind spots. But really, it's like a self-healing time that I think will open some things up for me. There's things that I love about those Eastern spirituality practices that inspire me, even though it's in some senses very different. I also um, feel that like sometimes it all gets into my head and like I feel a pressure that if I'm not doing something so related to one of these things in the, this very moment uh, it can overwhelm me. But I'm letting that go and just, you know, what happens is going to happen. And it's all kind of amazing in the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you any idea where you might be in the future? Or I do a few places that you think feel tempted to be. I'm, I'm certainly going to always be a traveler in some capacity. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'll be in a rotation between the places that I already know. There's many places in Europe, um, mostly in the north. Um... Scandinavia, uh, many connections open there for me, and there's I'm really received well there, so I love to be there. Um, it feels like there's a magic in the air, and many things open. India, I love. I learned so much there. Thailand, I I've been in Mexico and Guatemala for so long, um, and I'm a little bit done in some <laughs> sense, but but I will be I will be drawn back there and. I'll be drawn back to America, the United States of, obviously. I still want to explore more of Peru, Colombia, and Ecuador. But, um, you know, that'll happen in its time. And, of course, oh, yeah, Japan also. I mean, all of the places I've been call me, and, and I still have connections everywhere. So it's just a matter of the timing. And this is one thing where I could dwell so much on it. But instead, I'll just be in the moment and yeah, see, see where the path takes me. It's very much at that point that way at this time yeah well today we're we're in my hometown this is italy what do you think of it beautiful it's people it has an ancient energy there's something of like a grounding into simplicity that is present here yeah. i love it and your grandfather was from near here yeah great grandfather great grandfather right, right. okay yeah I'll, and 
and grandmother. <laughs> yes, that's why your name's Dante. Right. Italian name. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's all for today. Let me just show everyone a bit more of where we are. Behind me, that is the gate to the town, which has a tree on top. And this is a medieval walled city in Italy. It's called Civitanova. Ciao for now. Bye bye, much love. Cheers. <laughs>